Hi, I'm Maria from the Teacher School. I am an educational therapist and a math specialist, and I wanted to do a series to present different math games to you that you could do either as a parent with your, with your kids at home or as a teacher with your students at school. While it's, it seems like play, play is the primary way that children learn, that we all learn. And math games especially give us time to just uncover numbers, how numbers work, how they interact with each other, and just really build that number sense in a context that's really fun and a place where students feel free to take chances and make mistakes. So I wanted to highly encourage you to start playing games with your students at school, if you're a teacher, your kids at home, if you're a parent, and I look forward to hearing about how this goes with your kids. Okay, so today I'm gonna to teach you how to play a game called Domino Parking Lot. And this game is really good for kindergartners, first graders, any kids who need practice with basic counting skills and what we call subitizing. And subitizing is what happens when you look at a, a domino or a die and you know that this is five without counting each one. It's a very important basic skill and this game helps build it. The requirements for this game are pretty minimal. I use index cards going this way, we call it hot dog way, and a set of dominoes. If you don't have either of these, just plain paper and printed out dominoes, I'll put a link to a paper version you can print out below in the comments. And then basically gonna have start students start by writing out numbers 0 through 12 because 0 through 12 are the numbers um, that the dominoes will add up to. So you're going to have them, first of all, write 1 through 12 on the index cards. Again, I have them go this way, mostly because it uh, saves space, but also it's more like a parking space, which this game is supposed to be about. And then you just have them put in order. So both the tasks of having students write out the numbers. This is a student's work. I just went over it in black pen so you could see it. And then putting it in order are both really important for kindergartners and first graders if they don't have this skill, definitely need a little review. And um, I'm just doing it this way to fit in the space, but you could do it however you want. And again, I'm not gonna use all the dominoes, I mean all the cards just because we're really cramped here in terms of space. But you can see here I have 0, 1, 2. You can imagine 3, 4 going over this way. Um, here's 9. And all you need to do to play this game is have the student pick up the domino from the pile, look at the numbers on the domino, and the kid is going to either count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7 place that on, oops, my numbers are really off. Place that on the parking lot, like that. And then you just move on to the next one. Now, in order to help students kind of move forward with their math skills, you want them to go to, from counting each and every one to being able to subitize and say five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means counting on. So we wanna go from counting every single dot to subitizing the first biggest side and then counting on. So that's gonna go here, nine. And then another thing you might have students do is just know automatically this is one. Easy peasy, just put that there. And if a student can subitize both of these, then you're gonna to move to the next level. So we have counting every one, subitizing, counting on, and then the third level, which would be, I know that six and six. Now, one kid might go, okay, I'm gonna count up six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. But another student might think, six and six, I know my doubles, that's 12. And that's really where we want kids to get. We want kids to be able to subitize one, subitize the other, and then add them together. If that's really easy for your student, then this game 
is probably too easy for them, but that's eventually the kind of fluency we want students to have with the dominoes. So this would go on the 12, wherever that would be. And here we have one and one is two. And I prompt kids sometimes, what's one and one? It's two. Oh look, you have, what's this? Five. Five and what? Five and zero. What happens when we add a zero? So these are some of the questions you can ask students. Now, one question I get a lot is what happens when there's more than one that's equal to five? Well, that's easy. We're just gonna put that here. They both go in the parking space. Now, a follow-up activity you can do with students. Let's see if I have it. Oh, I do. Follow-up activity you could do with students is just to take um, after you filled in everything, right, all of the ones that equal each and every one, which you can do, I don't have this with me, but say you have, here's all the ones that are equal to five. These are just two of them. But what I had my student is, is I had her take the card, and then when, after the game was over, I just picked one number, in this case five, and I had her draw all of the dominoes, and then we wrote little number sentences. So five plus zero equals five, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and 1 plus 4 equals 5, and she drew all the pictures, and that was just a way to reinforce all the ways you can make 5, and that's a way you could follow up in this game. But if your student is feeling like anxious and done with this activity and it's just over it, then just move on. But this is another way to add another level of practice.